Hello my friends and welcome, we're gonna go to the front lines update a little bit later, let's go to the Belarus and the Poland situation, because today some of the helicopters, Belarusian helicopters, crossed the border with Poland. We even got some of the photos from that event, how locals took the picture in one of the Polish villages. There was the Mi-24 attack versatile helicopter as well as the Mi-8 helicopter. All of those aircraft went into the Polish airspace. At first, the Poland side didn't comment on that issue. However, after more proofs start to appear in the internet, Polish Defense Ministry had to comment that definitely the Belarusian helicopters went into the Polish airspace. Of course, that rises the tension between Belarus, Russia and the NATO countries, adding the situation with the Wagner army which is now located near to Grodno. Well, there are not many servicemen of the Wagner forces in this particular area, a little bit more than 100, but still even those Wagner soldiers could be dangerous because they have the military experience, they have equipment and they are free to go wherever they are said to go. The Belarus officials say that Wagner here are just to train the Belarus army, but I am not sure about that. Plus, the United States officials say that if Wagner attacks Poland or Lithuania, it will be counted as the Russian attack on those territories. Let's be clear that for now there is no imminent threat for Poland or Lithuania from the Wagner army. However, today we saw not a good signs with those helicopters that went into the Polish territory in this area. So why does Russia need some sort of the provocation or escalation in this area on the territory of the NATO countries? First of all, they want to test the reaction of the NATO countries on some sort of the sabotage attack. Second, they want to put it as negotiations for the future Ukrainian deal. For example, they may start escalating with sabotage attacks on the Polish territory or the territory of Lithuania, and they may say we're gonna stop it, but you need to push Ukraine for some sort of the peace deal. Because the escalation on the territory of the NATO countries is not good for either of the sides. But from what I understood, Poland is ready for any kind of action. They send some reinforcements, some sniper and they put new surveillance systems at the border of their country. Alright, now let's go to the front lines, we have the huge update in Avdivka. It was yesterday and it is today, it's not the major Russian assault or something, it's just the front lines correction in this area. The deep state map resource said about it in their message, the clarification of the front lines near to Vodine and Avdivka. So just the borders of the front lines were clarified, also let's go to this territory where Ukraine actually go the success. It was yesterday and it is today. Ukraine assaults near to Slotka and Stepne. Taking just capital villages under control and let's check the Russian defense lines, they're still far away in this region as well. As for the Staromayorska, we have the update that Russia still controls this part of the territory and they say that they're controlling Staromayorska, but it's not like that. You may check any kind of the resource and you'll see that Staromayorska is under Ukrainian control. But Russia definitely has the threat vector over here and they may try to recapture the Star Mayorsky, but not with the current forces they have. On the eastern direction, Ukraine took this part of the territory, it was yesterday and it is today. The fighting is ongoing for the single field, still in a grey area. Well, as you see, Ukraine tries many sorts of the attack attempts on the southern and the eastern front lines. The Ukrainian army is in search of the weak spot of the Russian Federation, where they can put lots of their forces, reinforcements and reserves to try to break through the Russian defense lines. Unfortunately, I did not expect it to happen very soon, but we have the nice vector near to Oryheve. Here the Ukrainian army already touched the main defense lines of the Russian Federation and I think that we're gonna try to penetrate those. Alright, about the cab booms for today, there was the big one in Sevastopol in Balaklava, I know that area and I was there many times, so the Russian base was under attack. This picture was shared today on the internet and based from what I know, there were some of the radar systems before, but it was more than 10 years ago, so for now there could be some sort of the ammunition depot that as reported was attacked by the drone. The cab boom is quite big, you can see the several story buildings in in this area and there is on the background but still it's the big cloud so there could be definitely the ammunition warehouse 
The strategy of Ukraine right now is to get rid of the Russian ammunition on the front lines and then try to break through the defense lines. Yes, if you didn't know, I'm from the Sebastopol city. There were also reports of the Ukrainian attack on the Russian camp somewhere on the south, so you can see the big line of the coast out there. So Russia trained their soldiers in some certain areas. Ukraine used HIMARS rockets to target their positions and finally there were many of the kabooms. As for the Kerch bridge, we can see that Russia deployed some sort of the cranes out there and they tried to repair their bridge again. According to their official information, it may take up to four months, so they may repair it till December. I shared the video today of the Russian Lancet drone attack on the IRST system somewhere on the south, while well, Ukrainian side says that it was a dummy of that system. So it wasn't real, but the Russian side says that it was the real system because after attack it was displaced by its own power. So they claim that this strike changed their position to the other forest line. And they say that it happened after the drone strike, but we don't see the explosion. If drone hits those rockets, they usually explode. So I'm almost sure that it is not the real IRST system, which is probably installed on the self-moving track. Why do I think like that? Because of the explosion itself. It didn't basically happen. Drone hit this target, but there was no afterfire and it went off like some sort of the paper and definitely we don't see the damage for this system afterwards. Today there was one more big attack on the Russian office center Moscow city. Yes, it is located in Moscow, there are mostly office buildings, but also there are some flats, but the flats belong to the Russian elite. The same building was struck as the one before. Just for you to understand who owns the property inside, there are 12 flats of Bashar Assad, dictator of Syria, and also there are many of the Russian elite offices and apartments. Ukraine knows where to target because Russian elite doesn't care of what is happening in Ukraine and also in most of the part of the Russian Federation, but if their own property was hit by the drone attack, they may start to think about the future of this war in general. The Russian elite is probably the single force that may change something in the Russian Federation, I mean with the current Putin's regime. It was pretty much loyal to Putin, but now their own red line was crossed. If they start to question about their own safety, it's the big problem for Putin. Because why should they support Putin in that case? The Ukrainian drone attacks are usually performed by those drones, those are called beavers. They they have the stabilizer on the front and may carry around 30 kilograms of explosives, much less compared to the Shahid drones, but they may cover more distance. But unfortunately, we are still in lack of the massive production of those drones. For example, just right now we have the air sirens in many of the regions of Ukraine, and for sure Russia is using the drones. They usually use around 20 drones for those attacks. For Ukraine, it's dream. For the Moscow attack, we used only four. The United States says the signs that Russia wants to return to the Green Deal. Why is it happening like that? Because even without Russia, some of the ships went actually to Ukrainian ports. So Russia cannot stop them without implementing their control over the Snake Island or having the air defense ships in their Black Sea Marine fleet. The great news for Ukraine about the artillery ammunition, the United States of America negotiated the supplement of those shells from Bulgaria and the South Korea. Also, they're negotiating right now with Japan. Mostly, we are speaking about the 155 mm caliber. The modern day war shows that artillery plays a very big role. The British Defense Intelligence says that Ukraine is exhausting the Russian army defense day by day. Day. So Russia faces the lack in artillery ammunition and also reinforcements. Based on that information, I think that Ukraine soon is going to be ready for the break through the Russian defense. Alright, awesome news, this morning two of the Russian Navy ships were attacked by the drone boats. We are speaking about the ship Sergei Kotov and Vasily Bikov. Identical construction and probably they possess the threat for the civilian ships 
that wanted to go to Ukrainian ports. That's why Ukraine used the drone boats, while Russia haven't even commented on that issue. However, there is the intercepted audio recording saying that Russia had losses. One sailor lost his life for sure and five more got wounds. I listened to it today, well, I probably put some of the subtitles and will publish on my Telegram channel. You may find it in a video description just below. Sorry about the short video today, but I think those are the main news. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like button to this video. And if you want to support my channel, there will be some of the links available in a video description just below. Thank you so much for watching me. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.